Well, today is the bookend of last week. Last week we had the conversion of Saint, uh, the, the confession of Saint Peter, where Saint Peter announces to Jesus and to those around him who he believes Jesus to be. And this week we have the conversion of Saint Paul, when Saint Paul is struck by a vision of God, a vision of Jesus commanding him to begin to preach the gospel, uh, the beginning of his ministry as a, a Christian apostle. They're, they're, they're bookends, as I say, and I can hear myself preaching all the things that preachers have said down through the centuries about this, that uh, one is the heart, St. Peter is about the faith of the heart, and St. Paul is about the heart, faith of the, the, the mind, the consciousness, uh, that, that in some way this, this feast today of St. Paul is a reminder that sometimes the will of God will turn us pretty sharply from what we thought we were supposed to do to what we are actually intended to do in the vision and will of God. And both of those are important messages. If in fact those two things, that somehow faith is not just heart and not just head, but in some way a combination, and that sometimes we need to be listening for the will of God, perhaps to turn us in a new direction, if that's all you need to hear today, then go and be blessed. Because those are tough things to do in our faith. Trust me, it's really hard to balance our heart, our heart and our mind, our thoughts and our feelings in our life of faith. And it's even harder to be willing to have God tell us, no, I don't want you to do that. I want you to do this instead. So if that's all that there, in, you need to hear today, okay. But I have a couple other things I hear in this lesson today that I think are worth meditating on a little more deeply, and I'll send you away with those ideas today. The first is to note that, in fact, St. Paul is on his way to do something pious. Now, it, 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 it's not a laudable thing. It, it, it's not a worthy thing. He's going to persecute people for their faith, and that's never worthy. But we shouldn't lose sight, even as we condemn that, of the fact that St. Paul is going because he's trying to live out his faith. It's very difficult for us in modern times, I think, and I said this to somebody just recently, to organize ourselves around the idea that Sunday morning and Monday morning are really not intended to be that different. For many of us, what we do on Sunday morning, or in this case, on Wednesday at noon, perhaps, is in some way separate. There's a, there's a, a gulf between what we do here and what goes on out there, what goes on in the other 23 hours of the day that we're not in worship. And St. Paul was in a very different position. He was someone who understood his entire life to be organized around his faith. Everything he did, everything he said, was intended to be a way of living out what it was that he believed. That, I think, is worth our thinking about, that, that somehow this new message from God this new direction from God came to him while he was on a pious errand. I think that's important for us to see that in some way we have to consecrate our lives to our faith in order to be open to those new messages from God. If we're going about our worldly business most of the time and we do this for two hours a week, how likely are we to hear that message coming from God? Part of the example of St. Paul is to say that by being constantly in the mindset that I am a faithful person, I mean, not, not spending your whole life breathing in incense and lighting candles, you have to do other stuff. But to understand that even that other stuff is in some way a pious thing appears to be important in opening our ears to what it is God would tell us. That there's something about living our lives faithfully that enables us to live our lives even more faithfully. The second thing, and it's not as evident in what we heard read today because what we heard is only one version of the story, but when Paul and his companions have this experience on the road and they're, it says they're all thrown down, Paul, as he gets up, discovers that he's blind. And it's only sometime later when he uh, goes to see a, 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 le a Christian leader in Damascus who isn't particularly thrilled to see him coming, but nonetheless is told to heal him and does, that he regains his sight. This is an odd idea for us because particularly in the season of Epiphany, we imagine 
the, the arrival of God in our lives, the, the, the revealing of God's purpose in our lives to be about more light rather than less. I think, though, that there's something about the idea of being blind temporarily and then having light restored that somehow intensifies that experience. That if we are to see the light, we must be willing to expect darkness as well. That perhaps, in fact, the light only comes after a period of the profoundest kind of darkness. Maybe not literal blindness, maybe spiritual blindness, maybe groping in the dark in our lives to figure out what it is God intends for us. We all have those times. Perhaps those are the times when we should expect that we are being conditioned better to receive the light when, in fact, it appears and we can see it. And the third thing that's worth considering is that once Paul has been given this message, has been given this job, he just can't shut up about it. It's apparent when he talks about, I said it in Jerusalem, I said it in Damascus, I went to hear those people, I, I went here and there, I, I kept on talking. There is something about that that's really exciting. Have you ever had that experience when you have a new idea, when suddenly something has been suggested to you, whether internally or from someone else, and you, you're so caught up in it, you just can't shut up about it. I think you and I are being told that there are times when the message will be so exciting, we just have to share it. Often in modern times, we've been taught to think of our faith as being a very internal, private thing. Sometimes I think we can't do that. We have to get over that, get past it. We, even Episcopalians, we, even nice, polite people, must get used to talking about our faith. I'll give you one simple example of that. On Monday this week, Laura Houghton came in to do a, a viewing of the, the St. John's Bible uh, with Connie Cooper, and she brought one of her friends from high school. She had said to this friend, I'm going to look at a really exciting Bible. Would you like to come with me? And the friend said, yes, I would. I really would. And so the two of them came together. It wasn't a whole lot of heavy evangelizing there. It wasn't a whole lot of saying, let me tell you about Jesus. It was just saying, come with me and see. Where have we heard that before? Sometimes that's all there is to it to find what there is in our lives that is beautiful, that is meaningful, that is healing, that is refreshing to us, to tell someone about it. Perhaps in that way, we also will become little versions of St. Paul, those who have had new light shine upon them and just can't wait to share it. Amen.